while they're saying the same things those quote-unquote bitter dark-skinned women are saying about colorism. And I've, I've seen this, you know, beyond the celebrities. I've seen this happen to so many people on this app, on YouTube, in various black women in empowerment sectors who shit on my platform. Oh, I talk about colorism too much. Oh, I'm insecure. I'm jealous. I'm bitter, right? And then the next minute, their sector gets infiltrated by colorists, right? Then there's some work. The thing is, is that you're saying, really, that some people have a dose of what you have, but they don't have the full thing. So their sense of colorism against other people of other complexions come out and are triggered at different moments in different time periods. It doesn't mean that there are colorists that are infiltrating their sector. It means that they have a little bit of that jealous bone and, you know, they have a bit of their problems personally with skin tone or whatever's going on there. And sometimes it gets activated. Yours, on the other hand, never is needing to get activated because it's always active, you see, because it's your money grab. And it's your cash cow, you know? And so then it's always active. You make it up when it's not even real. Anyway. I'm <laughs> repeating my talking point verbatim. This happens a lot with the divestment sector, right? I see it. I, be, I see what, I peep it. I see what happens over there. Chrissy's insecure. She talks about colorism too much. Oh, colorism doesn't affect me. And then when you get a colorist divester in there calling you ugly, burnt monkeys and all of that shit, then all of a sudden you sound just like Chrissy, right? Right? Yeah, I don't understand why you guys always assume someone lighter skin thinks you're a monkey, burnt, or ugly. And why is it that everyone has to say you're pretty, otherwise we're colorists. Why are you bullying people to say you're pretty? Isn't that pretty messed up? You're literally saying here that if someone doesn't say you're pretty, that you, that they are colorists. Because they don't think you're pretty. No one said anything about your skin tone. They're saying they just don't find you attractive. And you're trying to equate it to your skin tone because you feel that makes it where you can bully people into telling you you're pretty. And personally, to me, I don't get it. Why would I ever want to say people like you are pretty when all your aim is is to try and say people like me are ugly, you know? Like, you guys are the main ones always saying you can't give compliments to people who are lighter skinned. And you can't admit you find beauty in lighter skin. So why should I find beauty in darker skin? Like, that's what I don't get. If you're not going to reciprocate, why do you expect others to reciprocate? Why don't you just embrace your own skin tone on your own and stop asking for others to validate to you? Especially since you don't return the favor to other people of other colors. If you can't find enough courage, I guess, to say it about other people of other colors, don't expect others to say it about your color who aren't your color, you know? And that's not to say any uh, dark skin is ugly, but it's just to say, why do you, you want it put on a pedestal? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If you're not willing to say other phenotypes are beautiful, then people of other phenotypes should not say that about you, right? We should just embrace our phenotypes without looking outwardly. Like, you should embrace your phenotype. I should embrace my phenotype. You know, uh, someone like, for example... Halle Berry should embrace her phenotype. Um, someone like Zoe Saldana should embrace her phenotype. I know I'm saying this 
similar phenotypes here, but you get what I'm saying. Someone like, for example, you know, uh, Meghan Markle should embrace her phenotype, and so forth, you know? We should all embrace our phenotypes, but don't ask for anybody else to try to embrace your phenotype. So that leaves you with no allies. And a lot of your movement has to do with trying to get others to see dark skin in a positive light, right? It's not just dark skin people. That's the thing with dark skin people. You guys are never just looking for self-acceptance. You're always looking for others to approve of you because most of the time the reason why you do that is because you don't approve of yourself. So instead, you go outward and try to find someone else who can approve of you. But the thing is, if you don't approve of others, don't expect them to approve of you. Anyway, continue. Yeah, yeah, I see y'all. And then what happens after you get over it? You do just what Kendra did. You go right back to kissing these, these, these mixed women's asses. That's what you do. And my thing is, since Danny's music isn't popping, because that's what Kendra said in the video, your music ain't even popping, you know, we, we have to talk about your personal life and not your music, then why are you continuously making her relevant? She shouldn't have, she shouldn't have been invited to the show to begin with. Again, I understand Kendra has a job to do, but honestly, one of the main reasons black women keep getting burnt like this after defending these women is because Kendra... And other black women with huge platforms, the shade room, all of those those spaces that are ran by black women, you keep these women relevant. That's what you do. And no, because I know you're going to say it. My channel isn't included in that. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Chrissy, well, you talk about them too. My channel isn't included in that because my content is to help more black women withdraw their support, not give support. Huge difference. Huge difference. That's why y'all mad at me. Because I'm telling you to withdraw your support. That's why they hate my channel. <laughs> so clearly, I mean, you know, you hate my channel, but you love this the Shade Room. So we can clearly see that the two different platforms are doing two different things, right? So let's not be dumb here. Don't be trying to silence me and say, well, you talk about them too. Yeah, and for a specific reason. Because y'all keep caping. That's why I talk about it. But other platforms, they'll put these colorist women and men. Not, it's not just the colorist women. It's the men, too. They'll put them on. They'll help them garner these huge followings, mostly black women, by the way. And they can consistently keep them relevant by giving them a microphone. Then once once they reach a certain level, this is for the men and the women. Once they Once they reach a certain level, they pretty much turn on the people who helped put them on. Or in this case. According to Danny, they have their teams <laughs> make it difficult for the black women who support them to work. But by then, it's too late. It's too late to really do anything because they've already grown their audience. They already have loyal fans who, again, are mostly black women who are going to side with them no matter what. Because there are black women still caper for Danny. Still. As, I, as we speak... My thing is, if you feel offended by her song, she didn't offend you, you offended yourself. That's how I feel about it. I mean, let's be honest. You have an issue with the fact that she celebrates her own skin tone and loves her own skin tone. You hate that she does what you can't do for yourself. You don't love your skin tone and you don't celebrate your skin tone. And you hate that she does. Because you can't feel the same way as she does. It's not just that. It's that you also think that yellow bone is better. Even though she never said that. But you feel yellow bone is better. And so it angers you even more because you feel like she's happy with what she has, which is better than what you have, deemed by you 
And that's most powerful because you're the one with dark skin. Who should be valuing your skin more, but you can't. Anyway, continue. They despise black women. But there's always going to be a black woman somewhere who stand them and can't for them. Always. This is just what we do. Like I said before, and I'm going to keep saying it, these women, colorist women, mixed women, and black men, specifically dark-skinned black women, they have a, a, a built-in self-defense team in the black community, and that is dark-skinned black women. That's us. That's y'all. Okay? I'm not included in that, but that's definitely y'all, the collective of dark-skinned black women, are the self, or are the defense team. They are the, the defense team for mixed women, colorist or not, just mixed women in general, especially, you know, light-skinned women as well, light-skinned black women as well, and dark-skinned black women, dark-skinned black men, I'm sorry, dark-skinned black men. Y'all are the defense team for those groups. No, only for light-skinned mixed people who um, prefer dark-skinned black men. You really mean to tell me that you think that she that these women are defense teams for Georgia Cat or Halsey? No, they mostly reject them and will do the dirty work on attacking women like Doja Cat. Which, you know, if you think of it, Doja Cat never did anything wrong to anybody. Doja Cat just happened to be, be born basically lighter, complected, light skin. Let's just admit that she is light skinned, um, half white, with a big butt, and a pretty face, and young. And she just happened to date men who were white, which she's half white, so it shouldn't be a shock, but it's a shock to these weird freaks. Anyway. And that's all she did. She didn't do anything wrong to anybody. You know, she just dated who she liked and happened to be attractive and young and light skinned. And black men, you will see, have a whole fit just by the name of this lady. They just go over and over and over, reeling, freaking out over Doja because Doja is thick. The Doja is pretty, Doja is young, and Doja is light skin. You'll see that black women do the same thing, and they'll do it on behalf of the dark skinned men. I have to understand, in those cases, they've been hiding their teeth like you have, and, you know, this is their time to sink those teeth right in. Um, and these are the rare occasions they love actually doing it. They love doing it more than they do it to like a dark-skinned woman who may prefer men outside of her race. They do it more because they don't even align with her. They only are protective towards her in favor of black men because black, men's, black men control dark-skinned black women who are attracted to dark-skinned men. This isn't all, of course, but there's a fair amount that are basically controlled by them. And you can see this in regular life situations. It's not particularly relationships or anything that makes them controlled by dark-skinned men. It's just, you know, socially, societally, you'll see how dark-skinned black women react towards dark-skinned men. It's almost as if they're servants, or, you know, they are basically the lapdog to dark-skinned black men. So continue. Yep. They don't need to come out and defend themselves, because y'all gonna jump in and do it. And I, y'all hate when I say it. But that's why it's very important for black women, who the ones who got some sense, that's why it's very important for y'all to, to, to stop blindly supporting and going so hard for these celebrities. Like I said about John Boyega, y'all was in y'all feelings about that. Y'all need to remain indifferent. And I'm not changing what I, I stand on what I said. Not everything requires an ob objection or a celebration. 
You also don't have to pick a side. You can remain neutral and not respond or say anything at all. Black women's response and our outrage and our engagement is what keeps these people relevant longer than, than they need to be. And I know because I used to participate in some of it before I woke up. And then I started doing commentary trying to wake other black women up. And like I said about John Boyega, your defense or support of these celebrities, it could end up backfiring like we see here with Kendra G. And she don't, poor thing, don't even know the game. She don't even realize the game that's being played on her. That's what makes it sad. That's what makes it sad. So let's move on to Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, okay? Um, oh, my God. It's just so much with them. These two women stay in so much drama. I can't even keep up. And... What's so disturbing to me, honestly, is that anytime something happens, we got black girls. I know it's a lot of young girls, you know, a lot of young black girls, but there's women too, women too. Young black girls and women all over the internet calling themselves barbs or they're part of the Barty gang, despite both of these women being colorist and anti-black woman as hell. Yeah, you really think, well... So, let's wait. Cardi B recently got into it with JT from City Girls. And it's because JT, she I guess she was responding to a troll or something. And she um, congratulated Glorilla, Glorilla, however you say it, on her song charting top 10 on the billboards, Okay. Um, and because she didn't mention Cardi in this, who was featured on the, the song, the Barty gang took that as a slight towards Cardi and they made a big deal out of it. They're like, oh, you only were, you only mentioned Glow and you didn't mention Cardi. Cardi's on the song. Cardi is why it's popular. They made a big deal out of it. So JT came back. And, you know, she said, hey, Cardi been having top tens. Well, first she said the tweet was too long. I couldn't throw Cardi in there. And she said, plus, she's been having top tens. You know, I've been congratulating her for years. This is Glow's first one. You know, and so I believe her. I think that's fair, right? Do y'all think that's fair? She's basically saying, oh, well, since this level of success is new for Glorilla, she was just congratulating her personally. But because Cardi was allowing her fans to get in her head, and let's just be honest, because she can't handle when the rap girls work with Nicki Minaj, because JT, you know, recently worked with Nicki Minaj on a song, right? Because she can't handle that, and Nicki can't handle it either. It's just so much, it's so stupid, right? But because, you know, Cardi's, Cardi, whenever you don't constantly sing her praises, and this happens with Nicki Minaj too, Right. But in this situation, because all of that went down, Cardi responded to Jay's JT calling her a lap dog. Then she told her to go fetch, you know, and then they got into this back of back and forth. The reason why um, Cardi B has Remy Ma as her uh, avatar is because Nicki Minaj put um, who did she put on her avatar, y'all? JT. She put JT on her avatar to basically show her support. And so Cardi B changed her avatar to Remy Ma. And do you see how they use you, black women, to go to to, to go against each other and to, to pick sides? You know, they use black women to fight their battles. All the time. Yeah, very childish, right? Very childish. And so, in this screenshot, Cardi B also made fun of her going to prison. You know, calling her prison pants. And I think that's because JT, you know, she's, what did she say? She called her prissy pants. I forget what she called her. I don't, I didn't, I didn't include that screen. It's totally fair to make fun of someone for going to jail. I mean... It's all due to the type of person you are, the character you are. That's got nothing to do with color, 
skin, you make things on color way too much when it never was to begin with. Because I'm not going to go over all them damn screenshots. It was so much, right? Um, but she called her prison pants. And I found it interesting that she used that as an insult because wasn't Cardi just on trial for hiring somebody to beat up two women over Offset? Oh, she called her fancy pants. JT called her fancy pants. Right. Okay. Yeah, Remy Ma went to jail. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, what? Why would you use that as an insult? Y'all are all in the same boat here. And, you know, I don't really understand because Cardi, all the whack rap girls, they always brag about being real gangsters. And, you know, I'm really in these streets. Fuck this internet stuff. Fuck this rap stuff. I'm really in the streets. And I'm this. You know, you know how they do. But then when Cardi gets mad, you know, or mad at a woman who, who's probably more gangster than her, then she uses it as an insult. Why would you assume she's more gangster just because of her skin tone or is it her actions? Because I'm seeing so many times you guys will cry about colorism. Then you'll make assumptions about someone based off of their skin tone and no jack shit about them. But you still try and make up what you know about this person based off of a skin tone. And it leads me to believe that you make the negative assertions on skin tone, not other people of other complexions. This is an internal issue, and this internal issue is a big problem. I've literally seen people who attack dark-skinned black people who are darker than them, calling them black, while being dark-skinned themselves, and I would generally... I think two times I would specifically basically ask them, why are you calling them black when you are black too? You're both black. And they would feel uncomfortable with it with me because I'd be lighter than them both, obviously. And then they'd feel like, oh, like in some kind of awkward way. And that's not how I was meaning it. If just saying, if you're black, you should be happy to be black. Don't call p other people black as if it's a bad thing. And don't disparage them for being dark when you're dark yourself. You know, you guys just don't have a good grisp, grip on loving yourself, it seems. Anyway, continue. So, and black women stupidly laugh at it. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good joke. Ha ha ha, right? We laugh at it. Y'all laugh at it. And then Cardi is making fun of black female rappers for not having as many hits as she does. And she's like, here, she's like, everybody has good, good and bad moments, but you haven't had one since what? Act up? And it's like, Cardi, one of the main reasons you're popular is because of colorism, because of how you look. And the industry actually pushing you above a lot of the black women rappers you're making fun of for not charting. Right? Not to mention, she's flat out copying black women. She's a caricature of some of the, the same black female. For one, I never understand why you guys say she's a character. Of black women, I think you mean to say she's a, she fits your stereotype and your generalization when you think of a black woman in a stereotype, stereotypical and ignorant way. Well, that's not her fault. It's more your fault because why are you thinking of black women in that way? Now, as far as her, she. This is why I have this photo up here. Okay, so you, as you can see, she has Afrocentric features before her plastic surgery. With plastic surgery, she has tried to help her features to make herself look less Afrocentric. I think specifically because she's trying to um, appeal to a certain audience. But yes, you can tell that her features originally were not praised. So, coming up with that lie is not going to work here because 
she literally has a very Afrocentric creature she's working with originally. Um, her hair is 4C, um, so, I mean, there's nothing mixed about her phenotype. She has very broad, round nose, full lips, high cheekbones, round eyes. She doesn't really have a forehead ridge, and her uh, forehead is kind of round. So, yeah, and her hair is 4C. You're just meaning that she has light skin. Yes, she has light skin, but that's about it. You know how you are. You could see a light-skinned ape, literal ape, chimp, and be jealous of that chimp, probably, because you are so obsessed with light skin. It's sad. Anyway. And then, Cardi is making fun of black female rappers for not having as many hits as she does. And she's like, here, she's like, everybody has good good and bad moments, but you haven't had one since what? Act Up? And it's like, Cardi, one of the main reasons you're popular is because of colorism. Because of how you look. And the industry actually pushing. Got nothing to do with her looks, honestly. Because she's had to have plastic surgery over and over and over again to achieve how she looks. So it's not about that. I think she marketed herself as a Latina rapper, and that was smart, because how many Latina rappers that are female um, rap like her? There's not many, at least, that are going to be made popular, and that's why she markets herself that way. She's not Latina, for that matter. She's only half Afro-Latina. The other side of her is Afro-Caribbean, just like Nicki Minaj but marketing herself that way was very smart because it got her into a niche that was more appealing than just coming out as just some regular light skinned black rapper from the Bronx which is less appealing and probably would not have gotten her the fame she has basically so it's not about specifically i think her phenotype more so her uh style and the kind of way she was marketed was as a latina rather than a black woman you above a lot of the black women rappers you're making fun of for not charting Right? Not to mention, she's flat out copying black women. She's a caricature of some of the, the same black female rappers that she thinks she's superior to. She got her whole style from the black women she's making fun of. She wouldn't be nothing with the black female rapper blueprint. And now she's mocking black women for them not being as popular as she is when Colorism very clearly gave her an edge over them. And I acknowledge, you know, Cardi works hard. Let's... No, colorism did not. You're trying to make it out to be that way, but I don't think it did because there's tons of light-skinned black women who are female rappers who didn't make it to her level and are much lighter than her for that matter. So it's obviously not her skin tone, and obviously it's not her phenotype in total, because she had to do plastic surgery, or so she felt she had to do plastic surgery to fit that look, because she naturally doesn't have that look. Anyway, continue. You know, she does, right? But a lot of black female rappers, unambiguous black female rappers, dark-skinned black female work, rappers, they work just as hard but they don't get the same opportunities. Why? Because they aren't mixed race and Latina. Cardi isn't mixed race. Cardi's father is an Afro-Latino. He is, he is someone who has mulatto descent, from what I remember her saying, um, and he is Dominican. Her mother is a black Caribbean, so... She's not mixed. She has a mixed parent and a black parent. Um, for example, Rihanna has the same mixture. Mixed father, black 
mother. Nicki Minaj has the same mixture. Mixed father, black mother. None of these people are considered non-black because they are mixed plus black. In our country, that's Black. So Cardi, what she does, she frequently rubs in her privilege in the faces of black women or black woman talent, okay? When the edge she has over them is out of their control. And when she does this, black women, we're just sitting around accepting it. We're laughing at the jokes. We're joining in. As this woman pokes fun at the fact that she has an edge up over women who look like you, y'all. Do y'all do y'all see how wild this is? Do you see how wild this is? This is just crazy to me, y'all. It's crazy. And listen, JT, she's not innocent. You know, she's made color statements in the past. I've called you. The thing is, like I said, it makes no sense. You're saying she's throwing her colorism or her benefit into other people's faces, and that's why she's um, popular. That's not the case when you're showing her face post plastic surgery. So that means in her career, as she's made it big and so forth, she's gotten pushed back for her phenotype. Why else do you think she gets plastic surgery to not have her original Afrocentric features, as she does here? She does it because she got a lot of pushback and because she's trying to have a phenotype more similar to Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj has more ambiguous features. This girl does not, and therefore that's why she's consistently tried over and over to look like her and to basically implement the plastic surgery she needs to try to mimic her phenotype because she's always been pushed in that direction because her facial features as a woman of African descent were never good enough to those type of black hating people. Continue. ET out before. So, because I, I know y'all are going to bring that up. Oh, well, JT said this and she said that and she got called out about it. We're not talking about JT right now, though. We're talking about Cardi B. And like I said in other videos about Cardi B, She's always resorting to these insults, right? When she got into it with the shade room owner, she mm -hmm. called her a water buffalo. We all know she's called black women roaches. So calling people water buffaloes has to do with skin tone? Or are you saying that if you insult a dark-skinned black woman, that must mean you hate all dark-skinned black women because you insulted one? None of this is making sense, sweetie. Right? And I've told y'all this before. Colorist non-black women, they love associating black women with animals when they get mad. Have you noticed that? Or they find some other slick way to call to call them ugly. Or or to, to say... Another thing is this. When you say that it's wrong to call dark-skinned black women brooches, why don't you try and not call other black women roaches and then maybe you won't be called a roach that's how i feel because so many times dark-skinned black women will call other black women roaches dark and dark-skinned women will call other women ugly dark-skinned black women will attack other women's phenotypes and then you will tell us not to attack your phenotype well, of course we will, because you are attacking us. Why shouldn't other people defend themselves? You know what I mean? So, trying to say that you can't be called a roach, but other black women can. No, you're equal to the rest of us, and you can be called any name, just like anyone else. You're not above it, because, you know... 
Everyone should have a right to free speech. That they look better than this. This is a pattern with these women. And Nicki Minaj did the same thing with Remy. Do y'all remember when she, she called Remy Shanae, basically saying she looks like a man? Nicki has also, she's all. And yet you never came to Nicki Minaj's defense when people would call her a man. So why is it so wrong for her to say the same about someone else who would never have her back in the first place? I don't get that. You guys always say, oh, you called a dark skin woman this or that. But you guys will say the same dang thing in the same breath about some other black woman. So why would other black women defend you when you guys are the biggest bullies towards everybody? And you are the biggest bullies. I mean, black women are the biggest bullies, honestly. And considering most black women are dark-skinned, then it kind of goes without saying now, does it? Right. So-called... Black women nappy headed. She said you need a permanator. Do y'all remember that? Nikki constantly raps about herself and other women having, you know, the, the mixed race aesthetic. She constantly raps about that. Recently, in the last couple weeks, she's been going back and forth with black female bloggers. And she and the Barb's have been making both, I, in my opinion, well, some of it's been covert, you know, covert and blatant colorist comments about the looks of those bloggers, especially if they're unambiguous, dark-skinned black women. And you know what? Those same bloggers, I'm sure they were Nikki fans at one point. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now look, her barbs are coming for you. And Nikki is liking the comments of the barbs calling you ugly. So it's wrong. That's what I mean. You guys keep saying someone is calling you ugly. That must mean that they are colorist or asserting that. That's just so weird. What if someone thought that all black women were ugly or all dark skinned women were ugly? That would mean that they think that they hate all black black dark-skinned women I wouldn't think so I mean even if they thought that that wouldn't even complain to the fact that they hate all dark-skinned black women it's just a matter of opinion whether someone thinks you're ugly or not but you act like it's so sacred like your beauty is so sacred or so much more special than someone else's that you think that basically you are above criticism basically when you're not i mean maybe what the truth is is that you feel like you can't compare and you can't stand up to criticism for your phenotype so you try to push colorism on other people to try to shut them up but anyway continue you must feel stupid for supporting me ever So we see these colorist insults coming from both Cardi and Nikki more than any dark-skinned woman entertainer. So you can bring up JT all you want. Nobody does this more than these mixed-race, light-skinned entertainers. And that's just really not debatable, okay? And they, they'll work with black women. They'll put on this facade of sisterhood as long as they're on the top. As long as they feel that they're on the top and they feel like they, they surpass them in some way. Sure, they'll work with, with black women who are less popular. Uh, uh, sure, they will. And I, I saw a tweet a long time ago that said that Nikki, a lot of times she doesn't collaborate with, with rappers who um, are just as talented as she is or more. And, you know, I thought about it. I was like, hmm, maybe there's some truth to that. <laughs> yeah. So this is what they do, right? This is These are the games that they run on you. But deep down... How do you know it's based off of skin tone? It could very well be that she doesn't want anyone on her level 
Because that's her competition. Why would she endorse her own competition? You know, the beef that she's had with Cardi, is that specific to dark-skinned people when Cardi is actually a bit lighter than Nikki? Obviously it isn't. So, yeah, I, I think you need to go back to the drawing board on your narrative here. Continue. They don't actually respect you. Or women who look like you. They feel superior to unambiguous dark-skinned women. Both Cardi and Nikki do. And I think what you feel is that you feel inferior to these women. Both Cardi and Nikki. That's why you can't even realize that Cardi got all the plastic surgery on her face. Because you're too obsessed with what color she is. You can't even pay attention to her actual facial features on her face or how they've changed over time. And the reason why is because you focus on her skin tone because you wish so badly you were born that way yourself. So it's clear that you feel you're inferior. But does Cardi B feel she is inferior? I don't think so. Yes, she did call some dark and black person a, d a burnt roach or whatever. But I think maybe she was focused on the roach part. Because the roach part is really bad. And the roach isn't really colorist in my opinion. But it's just to signify ugly. And I think she was trying to emphasize how ugly she thought the person was. Um, but yeah, to me, I don't think that these people feel better than dark-skinned black women because... You can tell that Cardi, for one, doesn't feel like she has the upper hand. She feels like she needs to hide her features and distort them through surgery. That lets you know she doesn't feel better. She feels like she needs to try to make herself better. You know, she's just like one of those light-skinned black women who try to change their face over and over again to look like a different race or whatever. Both of them are using black women to fight their battles, and we fall for it every time. Y'all did it with Tasha K. You're still dragging Tasha K. You are still, black women are still dragging Tasha K all over the internet on Cardi B's behalf. Do you know how stupid you look? And look, I'm not even a fan of Tasha. She was wrong. I agree. But there's no way in hell. I am going to attack a dark-skinned black woman and drag her for months at a time. Months at a time, y'all have been dragging Tasha over a mixed Latina that doesn't even like black women. Absolutely. The thing is with Cardi, she does, I don't think she's done anything that specifically implies she hates black women. I don't. With all the evidence that has been brought forward, it doesn't seem she has brought anything forward that implies she hates dark-skinned women. But, I do think that she is... The type of... person who is willing to put a lot out there and I think that she really has more of a self-hate issue with her own phenotype and that translates to black women as a total because of look at her surgery that implies she does think wider features are better and she doesn't have that. She has Afrocentric features. So the issue she has with herself, she would have with dark skinned black women, light skinned black women, and medium skin because she has that issue on her own face. Continue. Absolutely not. 
And if y'all want to hear me going in detail about that situation, I did talk about it. The video is uh is in the members only section and it's on Patreon. I'm not gonna go into that because, like I said, I'm, I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna sit here and, and hate for Tasha because there are some things I don't like about her. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna be dragging her publicly for months on behalf of Carter. That is. That's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And to be honest, I think Nikki gets away with this a little bit more than Cardi with, with using black women to fight fight her battles. Cause y'all y'all view her as being more black, right? That's another thing. Cause she's slightly more I don't think that Nicki Minaj is more black than Cardi at all. I think heritage wise, Cardi is actually equal amount of black to Nikki. Maybe Nikki has slight more, but I think they're pretty much even. Um, phenotypically, definitely not. Um, Nikki has much more n ambiguous facial structure, and she has Indian in her heritage, which makes her facial structure much more ambiguous than Cardi's. And this is why Nikki doesn't get plastic surgery on her face and I said face specifically um because she doesn't need to she just gets makeup and she's close enough to the ambiguous ideal that she feels phenotypically similar to so I just don't agree with that. I would also say that um, Cardi B has very tightly curled hair, 4C, while Nikki has more of a 3B, 3C hair type. So that's another thing. And then her skin tone difference. Cardi is light skinned. Nikki is not quite light skinned. She's light brown. Um, but she would fall in the light skin category between light versus dark. Um, and she is only a couple shades different from Cardi. So, I mean, even on that level, it doesn't seem like she would really be racially more black than Cardi, in my view. More black than Cardi, right? So y'all give Nikki the upper hand, but she's just as bad, y'all. She's just as bad. <laughs> She has enough of that phenotype, right? Where she thinks she's going to be, where she feels like she's superior to you. And she says it all the time in one way or the other. She doesn't deserve your support either. You don't have to pick a side. You don't have to be on either side. And Nikki, you... What you mean to be saying is that they're both light-skinned. Don't support anyone who is not light-skinned because it'll, it'll just end up making you feel jealous of the fact that they have more of a phenotype that is ambiguous than you. I don't feel these people have expressed that they don't like the phenotype of dark-skinned women. I feel like what you're saying is internalize hate for the fact that you're dark-skinned. That's what this is about. No. Oh. I think now she's trying to pretend she likes working with other female rappers. But, you know, I, with Nikki, I, I really think, here's what I see for Nikki. I think she has a really hard time sharing the spotlight. I, I do. That's that's the vibe I get from Nikki. And this woman is almost 40, 40 years old, y'all. She's 39 years old. She's married with a child. And she's online going back and forth with teenagers and young adults like she's a child, y'all. All because she's not the female rapper that she used to be. She's not as popular as she used to be. And Cardi, she, you know, she's headed down the same road. Cardi has been slowly falling off. Her music is not hitting like it used to. That's why she had to jump on that remix with Glorilla because Glorilla's hot right now, right? 
Cardi ain't really popping like that, like she used to be. And so now she has more time to beef with everybody. And she's doing the same thing Nikki's doing. Yeah. So this is what these women are doing. They're causing a lot of chaos between black women. Yet black women continue to defend them. You continue to support them. And to be honest, it's just embarrassing. And and their arrogance, their entitlement, their boldness, because these women are bold, if you ask me, to be able to just call you ugly to your face and talk about how you're, you know, they're so much better than you and how they got it so much better than you, flaunting their privilege in your... That's not flaunting your privilege at all. So when dark-skinned people try and talk poorly about a light skin, are they flaunting their privilege against them when they tell a light skin that they're ugly in favor of themselves and saying that they're more valuable and more beautiful than the lighter skinned woman uh, is she basically flaunting her privilege against that light skinned black woman because that's what you're saying that if they say that they're ugly and they happen to be dark skinned they're flaunting their privilege then you wouldn't have to say that someone who is dark skinned who does this to a lighter skinned person is flaunting their privilege too so you can't have it both ways you can't have it just one way you just take it? Really? These women are bold. And it's because you allow it. It's because you continue to egg them on. And when somebody like, like me calls it out, I'm bitter. I'm, I'm evil. I'm the mean one. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Seriously. Now, I will say, black men, they're primarily re- responsible for introducing these women and putting them on. It's primarily their fault, right? But it's us, it's black women who keep them relevant. Way past past their cutoff time. Way past their cutoff time. We keep them relevant after they've proven to be anti-black women. And, you know, I saw a couple comments. A lot of black women, you think it's only about them being foreign and, you know, looking down on black American women specifically, and you think it's the it's a cultural thing and that's the main issue which that is part of it right that's part of it but i don't want dark-skinned women to get lost in that because if these were american women you know if nikki and cardi um were ados right it would be the same issue because mixed race american women are being elevated over american dark-skinned black women as well so even if you take the culture out of the equation, you still have the same problem. So I encourage dark skin women. I said this a long time ago. ADOS came after me, but don't get so caught up in the ADOS conversation because ADOS are colorist as fuck. Yeah, I said it. They're colorist as fuck. They're the same. So let's not do that. Yeah. And black women, I I know it's hard for many of you to do, but just like these colorist black men, you got to stop caping for these women. You got to burn the cape. You got to burn the cape. And I'm going to need y'all to to Google me. I'm going to need y'all because somebody came here talking about, you got burn the cape from such and such. I created that phrase, y'all. I created it. YouTube it. Google it. Chrissy burn the cape. I'm the first one who said it. So they got it for me. No shade. I'm not trying to get keep talking points. I think that's stupid. But when you accuse me of copying somebody, then I have to correct you. So I'm correcting you. I created that. Okay? Okay. But yeah, you got to stop caping. ADOS, I said it, and I'm going to say it again. Common sense ain't common. He says ADOS is not colorist. You're lying. You're colorist. I have an ADOS mother. I grew up, born and raised, United States. ADOS stepfather grew up in the household, went to an American school, mostly 80. Not true at all. She did not. She is half Jamaican. She is lying again. ADOS students, y'all colorists as fuck. Stop lying. All 
American descendants of slaves. That's what ADR stands for. The only one that is colorist out of this whole thing is you. And a lot of Caribbeans like yourself and your father's side and so forth. Well, this is why you hate lighter skinned people is because of your culture. Because you were taught to be colorist against darker skinned black women. I mean, lighter skinned black women in favor of darker skinned black women. But, burn the cape, y'all. You don't want to be like Kendra G on the radio, vehemently protecting a colorist and having to backtrack and drag them two years later when they cross you. And then when they say sorry, you got to come back and kiss their ass again. Like, no, just don't. Save yourself, the American black women. Burn the cape. Burn the cape. So, um, let me see. I know a couple of you super chatted before I go out of here. I'm going to um, see. I can't see the new ones. Thank you for everybody who super chatted. I greatly. Oops, sorry about that. 